we have spoken about how to find absolute maximums and minimums of functions. Today we're going to talk about how to find relative, also called local, maximums and minimums. Here's a kooky looking function and I've labeled some relative maximums. Here's a relative max. Here's a relative max. There's a relative max. Here's a relative min. There's a relative min. Pause the video and try to decide what makes a relative max, a relative max, and a relative min, a relative min? Okay, perhaps you discovered that these things happen at critical points. Each one of these points is a critical point. In other words, where the derivative of the function is zero or undefined. But that's not enough because this might be a critical point there. Looks like the slope might be zero there for a moment. And I don't know, maybe that's a critical point where the slope for a moment is undefined, right? And those were not relative maxes or mins. So perhaps what you discovered is that yes, a relative max is a critical point where the slope is positive, the slope of the function is positive and then becomes negative. Slope is positive and then becomes negative. Slope is positive, then becomes negative. Of course, another way to say that is that the derivative at a relative max changes from positive to negative. Similarly, a relative min occurs at a critical point where the derivative changes from negative to positive. In other words, the slope of the function is negative, then the slope of the function is positive. All right, here is a critical point where the slope or the derivative is undefined, but that's still a relative min because the derivative goes from negative to positive. Okay. Now, relative maxes and mins can also be absolute maxes or mins. So this is a relative max. This also is an absolute max. And I know that just because my function is going down, 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 down. Okay. So relative extrema, extrema, remember, just means maxima and minima. Relative extrema occur when f prime of x is zero or f prime of x is undefined. In other words, when the derivative is zero or the derivative is undefined and where the derivative changes sign. Positive to negative gives you a relative max. The derivative goes from negative to positive. That gives you a relative min. Let's do a couple examples. Here's a nice quartic polynomial. Let's find any relative maximums and minimums, shall we? Well, we know that relative maximums and minimums happen at critical points, so let's find critical points. Let's see where this derivative equals zero or where it's undefined. Well, I know that the derivative of polynomials is always defined, right? I'm not going to have any cusps or any issues here. So I'm just going to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. I'm going to factor out a GCF. And it looks like I have a critical point at zero and a critical point at negative three. Do I know that these are relative mins or, and maxes? No. All I know is that those are critical points. It's just a place where the derivative of this function is zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little number line and I'm going to do some analysis of the derivative or the slope of this function on either side of these interesting points. So I'm going to put my negative three there and my zero. These are my critical points. I know that my derivative is zero here. And then I'm just going to plug in some points into the derivative to see what the sign of my derivative is. So let's plug in a number that's smaller than negative three. Well, negative four is smaller. Let's come up with a number between negative three and zero. I don't know, negative one seems good. And let's pick a number that's bigger than zero. I don't know, it can be anything. How about one? So these are just test values so I can see if my function has a negative slope or a positive slope. So let's go ahead 
and put negative 4 into my derivative. You know, I'm going to use my factored form because that just makes life easier for me, um, plugging in a negative 4. So here I go. I'm going to put in 4 times negative 4 squared times negative 4 plus 3. Negative 4 squared, that's positive. Something positive times 4 is positive, positive. Negative 4 plus 3, that's negative. That's going to give me something negative. I don't really care what the slope is. I just want to know if the slope is positive or negative. Let's plug in a negative 1 into my derivative. All right, that's going to be 4 times negative 1 squared. So if I have something positive, times negative 1 plus 3. Ah, that gives me a positive outcome. So, so far I have a negative slope, a zero slope, a positive slope. Now let's plug in one into my derivative, four times one squared, so far positive, times, po ah, still positive. So I'm pretty sure I know what this original function is gonna look like since it's a polynomial. I'm gonna have a negative slope, a slope of zero, a positive slope, a slope of zero, and a positive slope again, right? I'm just kind of very loosely sketching this. Okay, so we're ready to find our relative minimum. I think we can see here there's a relative minimum at x equals negative 3. And there are no relative maximums here. Just an aside, um, if I had asked you to find an absolute minimum, I think you have enough information here to realize that you also have an absolute minimum at negative 3. And one other point, um, when I ask for relative mins and maxes, usually you're looking for the location, in other words, the x values. Whereas with the absolute maxes and mins, usually the question involves what the y value is. Okay? Now, this is not enough. We always want to accompany this with an explanation, something that justifies why we know there is a relative min at x equals negative 3. So take a look at what I wrote here. This is a little informal, but it gets the job done. Basically, I'm saying f of x has a relative minimum at x equals negative 3, since f prime of negative 3 is 0. In other words, it's a critical point. And f prime of x is negative and then positive. That justifies why you know you have a relative minimum at x equals negative 3. You have a negative slope and then a positive slope. In other words, the derivative is negative and then positive. Let's look at another example. Let's look at g of x. Okay, ooh, we might have some interesting derivatives here since I'm not, this is not a polynomial anymore. Let's just take the derivative. And again, I'm taking the derivative because I want to find the critical points. As I take the derivative, don't forget the chain rule. So I just did the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. I'm gonna set this equal to zero. And again, whenever I have a negative exponent, I sometimes like putting that in the denominator when I'm doing algebra. It just makes things a little easier. Let's see, the three is down in the denominator. That's a four X in the numerator. I'm gonna set that equal to zero. And not only that, but I also want to look at the denominator and say, hey, not only do critical points happen when the derivative equals zero, but critical points happen at the X values that make the derivative undefined. So what X values will give me a zero in the denominator? Hmm, plus or minus one will get me in trouble. Plus or minus one will give me a zero in the denominator. So those are critical points, places where this derivative is undefined. And as a whole, a value of zero for x will make this function zero. Stop the video and see if that makes sense. You could, if you want to do some algebra, just do cross multiplication, you end up with 4x equals 0, so x equals 0. Okay, I have three critical points, and let's see if any of these are relative maxes and mins. So I'm going to make my little number line. It's always good to label this number line because you're finding 
the values of the derivative. So here, negative one, zero, one. All right, let's pick some values in between. I'm gonna pick a negative two to test. Let's pick negative one half in between negative one and zero. Let's pick one half in between zero and one, and let's pick two. And again, I'm. let me just label my critical points. I'm getting these test values so I get some information about the slope of my original function and if I have any mins or maxes. Now, sometimes people reach for their calculators. I encourage you not to reach for your calculator. It's going to screw you up, quite honestly. <laughs> I would instead just go ahead and plug these values into your derivative and just, you don't need to find values, you just need to know positive or negative. So if I'm plugging a negative two in for my x, the denominator is gonna be three, three times the cube root of three, that's something positive. The numerator, four times negative two, that's negative. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. So I have a negative slope. All right, here I have an undefined slope, okay? Negative one half, again, just think about what that's gonna give you. One half squared, negative one half squared is one fourth, one fourth minus one is something negative. The cubed root of something negative is negative. Uh, the top is four times negative one half, that's a negative divided by a negative, that's gonna give you a positive. I'm doing this kind of quickly, so take your time and try to do it on your own. Okay, then I'm at my critical point where my slope is zero. Okay, let's plug in one half. One half squared, that's one fourth. Okay, I have a negative in the denominator. The numerator is positive. Ooh, a positive divided by a negative, that's gonna give me a negative derivative. And let's plug in two. I don't know why I'm starting with the denominators, but I am. Two squared four, that's gonna be something positive in the denominator, positive. All right. Okay, so I have a function here that has a negative slope, then a positive slope, then a negative slope, then a positive slope. If I wanted to come up with a sketch, I could probably guess what this is gonna look like because I know these slopes are undefined, but you don't have to come up with a sketch, but let's just do that for now. I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna have a cusp and a nice round, woo, and then a cusp, something like that, right? But at any event, this is definitely a relative minimum at x equals negative one. This right here is a relative max at x equals zero. And this right here is a relative min at x equals one, okay? Now, you didn't have to sketch this, but what I would ask you to do to finish this problem as we did before is to now write a sentence and justify your findings. So what I would say here is g of x has a relative min at x equals negative one and at x equals one, since g prime of x is undefined and g prime of x is negative and then positive. Now there's a more formal way to write this, but this is, uh, this is fine for now, okay? So I have a relative min at negative one because g prime of x was negative and then positive. I also have a relative min at x equals one because my derivative was negative and then positive. g of x has a relative max 
at x equals zero, since g prime of zero um, equals zero and g prime of x changes from positive to negative. Okay? Again, I'm being a little informal, but you get the idea here. And I think anybody reading this would be convinced that you found the relative mins and the relative maxes. They paid paradise, put up a parking lot with a pink hotel.